How do you like to get lower prices on big ticket items? We think you can, and we'll show you how on the Dollar Stretcher interview. Hi, I'm Gary Foreman, editor of thedollarstretcher.com. With me today is Bobby Hoyt. Bobby graduated in 2012 with 40,000 in student loan debt. In less than two short years, he paid it off on a high school teacher's salary. Along the way, he began a blog called millennialmoneyman.com and quit his job to start a financial education company for young people. Bobby, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Bobby recently helped us uh, with an article on haggling for, uh, for millennials, and we wanted to explore the topic a little further uh, for the benefit of all of our readers. Uh, uh, I mean, I know uh, sometimes I, I want to haggle for an item, uh, and uh, whoever I talk to says that that's not possible. How can you tell if it's possible, if you've got a good item that's uh, ripe for haggling? Well, I think the, the most important thing to, to understand is when you walk in a store, you need to, to be able to see the difference between a, a worker and a salesman. Um, a, a salesman is somebody that's going to be willing to be able to sell something. A worker is going to help you find products. And I think when you walk into a store, you just kind of observe what's going on or on and, and see how the person comes and talks to you that's in the store. Um, that's a good indication that you're going to be able to haggle for some for some items. And you know, part of it also is just doing some some research beforehand. Like, you know, when I go into a jewelry store, which I don't go very often, but when I do, you know, I know that those are items that you can haggle, or, or if you go to a, a tire shop, um, I found that one out recently. Th those are things that you can you can haggle or negotiate for. And, uh, so really just being able to read the room and, and do a little bit of research before you get there. A lot of, a lot of it really is then fi finding somebody who's a decision maker. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, now, uh, you know, haggling is always, you know, pretty much a face-to-face -face kind of thing, uh, uh, but more and more of our shopping is online. Are there any uh, places online where haggling is, uh, ex ex is acceptable? Well, yeah, I know that there's, um, I think, Newegg.com. There's a couple of online websites, eBay, um, where you can do some forms of haggling. I, really, though, um, in the generation that I grew up, that I grew up in, the millennials, we, we don't deal with that very often. Uh, we pretty much just point and click and buy. So you know, as far as haggling websites, there's really not many that I've been to. It's The only haggling situations that I've had are just in store, uh, usually in a mall or, or something like that, or a big box store. Mm -hmm. uh, now I know you stress the uh, research before shopping. Uh, what, what do you all include when you do uh, do your research? The most, uh, the most important thing that I do, <laughs> and usually my research, I mean, it's, it's research. Uh, it's, you know, in the parking lot, pulling out my iPhone, looking at uh, whatever item I want to buy, but um, you know, a perfect example, when I was, I had to buy tires for my fiance about three months ago, and uh, I knew what kind of tires that I wanted for, so the, the best thing to do is just check the online price, and usually, because there's less overhead on the online items, um, those prices are a little bit lower, so that's a good starting point if you want just a baseline price. So when you walk in and you talk to the salesperson, you can immediately just say, well, I saw this price online, can you do that, or can you beat that? And that'll knock you down generally a couple percent uh, percentage points on the price, not too much, but that'll give you a good way to start uh, the haggle process. Uh, yeah, it seems like a lot of it really is just a matter of asking a question or two. And that is, the, yeah, communication is and reading people, and uh, that's the, really the biggest thing. And that's something that people my age have a, a, a little bit of a struggle with. Uh, we're not used to having to barter or negotiate. Most of our interaction is through text. Um, just even growing up, you know, we had AIM and we had those kind of things. So um, we're more inclined to talk online, even versus the phone, especially, you know, not in person. So um, it's, it's definitely a challenge for us to do that kind of a thing. And, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, you know, of course, one way to overcome that challenge, though, is to, to just ask a few questions. I mean, we're all uh, familiar with asking a question what the resolution of a TV monitor, you know, a monitor right. is. Uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with taking the next question. Can you do a better price for me? Yeah, that's usually. I mean, that's usually my baseline question when I walk in. Can you beat this price, or can you do better than that? Um, one thing that I like to use a lot is, can you help me out and do a better price? People like to really feel like they're helping you, uh, whether they're salespeople or not. I mean, people are people. Um, you know, they, so I always go from the angle of, can you help me with this, or can you do me a favor and give me a better price? And that tends to work pretty well. 
Yeah, well, I, I think most most people uh, uh, they want to try to help somebody else if they can. In yeah. that. Uh, now, well, what kind of feedback do you get from other people uh, that are using some of these techniques? <laughs> um, the feedback that I usually well, not a lot of people I know that are my age use them. I'm trying to help them do that, but the feedback that I usually get, uh, it'll stall out. The, the negotiation will stall out, or they just don't really make a lot of headway. And a lot of that is you have to be ready to walk out of the store. And people aren't comfortable doing that because people don't want to feel cheap. Uh, we, we don't like being labeled as cheap. And that's something that people really struggle with is how do I get to the next part where they actually drop their price just a little bit lower to where I'm more comfortable. Um, that's, that's really where we struggle, I think, young people. Yeah, they, they always said that uh, you knew you finally had a good deal on your car uh, uh, when the, you were walking out the door and the salesman uh, caught you and said, okay, yeah, no, we'll do it that, that way. Yeah. And you have to be ready to do that, but people just, we're not comfortable with that because you feel like you look bad, or you, you, know, you, you don't have as much money as what people want, you want people to think you have. You just have to get over that, <laughs> you know, you have to walk out, you don't have to buy their product if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. Now, uh, uh, tell uh, tell our viewers a little bit about the Millennial Money Man. <laughs> Millennial Money Man. Uh, it's a project that I started about six months ago when I was still a, a high school band director, um, and it was something that I did just basically in the nighttime when I got home from work. I worked about 60, 70 hours a week, which was quite a lot for a teacher, but um, when I got home, I just started kind of writing about things that that I was interested in. I was really interested in student loans and paying them off because I had been able to do that pretty early. And I was really just, I want to help people my age know more about finances because we're just not taught that very much in schools now. Um, you know, that it's a big gap in the learning. We, we learn more about algebra uh, than we do about money. And I know that I've used more money than I have algebra since I graduated. So it's, it's, a, it's a big deal to me. Um, basically what I've done, it, you know, I, financially I was in a place where I could leave my job and pursue this full time, which was great. Um, and the next step is for me building my blog, you know, building my reach. But then, you know, I also want to get into the schools and start doing some seminars with, with high school graduates or, or soon to be high school graduates, kids that are about to take on a ton of student loan debt. Because I, I really think that it's important not just for young people, um, but for our country that these kids come out of the schools educated on how to deal with their student loan debt. So that, that's really the main goal of Millennial Money Man. And it, it's been a lot of fun so far. I'm, I'm really looking forward to growing the, growing the brand, so to speak. Yeah, well, we'll, uh, you know, we'll include a link over to it um, uh, because we think it's a good, re great resources uh, for, for a lot of people. Uh, Bobby, thanks for joining us today and sharing your wisdom. Uh, we want to thank our viewers for joining us and invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can follow us on the various uh, social media channels. Uh, and if you found this uh, video helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. We'll look forward to seeing you again on the next Dollar Stretcher interview.